What's up, Otaku? Is it your tour guide here? Um, so I want to give a shout out to J Rule. He's a you know YouTube uh, content creator here in the local Seattle area. He's actually my main competition for digging in log boxes. <laughs> uh, he goes out and he does these comic call videos. Um, he puts, hits up a lot of places and, and just finds all the treasures. So um, I kind of. Uh, dislike him for that fact, but I also really like his content. But anyway, um, yeah, you know, uh, I was watching one of his videos and um, it got me thinking um, about storage. So, as you know, I added a bunch of comics over the weekend, um, I added about 50 books, and so, you know, I also picked up a, lo a short box and my comic collection is kind of growing and I just want to be able to kind of protect my higher priced books um, a little better than I've been. Um, what I've been doing is like, I've been putting them in these um, sleeves here, these, these uh, mylar sleeves. And these are actually really good protection, um, I've got to say. But um, I, I wanted to, you know, just kind of uh, do, do a better job and put them in some top loaders. And I'd always been kind of debating, oh, is it worth the money? Because, you know, they're about $3 a top loader. And it was Jay who convinced me to, you know, he just put out a video where he reviewed um, the top loaders to get. And so I saw the video and I thought, you know what, um, it seems like... Uh, with inflation going up, those things might go up a little bit more in value. Maybe I should just at least get, you know, 10 of them to, to keep the 10 most cherished books in my collection protected. So that's what we're going to do. Um, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so this is uh, the table that I tabulated all my comics in the collection. And I would really encourage you to do that because what it allows you to do is it allows you to kind of just easily navigate your collection without having to dig through it. So for example, if I just wanted to take a look at my Copper Age books, I could just select Copper and just have, you know, all my Copper Age books there for, for me to, to kind of sift through the data. Um, but of course, what we're going to do here, what we've done is I've uh, created by basically the price I've um, I've sorted uh, largest to smallest and so this is my collection from largest to smallest and the ones in bold are the uh, comics that have already been slabbed or are going to be slabbed they're at CGC at the moment I should actually yeah I should Anyway, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to bold the ones that are at CGC. And so what I'm going to do now is um, look at the top, uh, I guess, the most expensive comics in my collection, kind of pull them out, and then gauge the most uh, cherished books in my collection. Because oftentimes the most cherished books in your collection don't necessarily reflect the most expensive so it's not like I just want to protect uh, the most expensive. I want to protect the most cherished books in my collection. And so that is what I intend to do. But this list will help me at least kind of weigh, okay, well, this one should definitely go in because it's valuable versus this one should go in because of the sentimental um, value. So, yeah, uh, we've got our comic book top loaders here. We've got 10 of them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the sorting and, and and kind of prioritizing and put them in the top loaders. And I'll let you know um, what I think at the end of it. So I'll be back in a, in a few moments with the comics in the loaders and we can go over them. Um, and you can hear my thoughts on whether this is good value or not. Okay, I'm back and I've uh, put all the comics that I wanted to put into these uh, top loaders and I gotta say, uh, you know, thanks. Uh, I'm gonna say thanks to J rule for um, Recommending these uh, I am just so pleased with this investment uh, 
they're really um, sturdy. They've got this uh, slabbed feel to them. They're like they're weighty. They're definitely um, you know thick. It's a thick slab of plastic. And what's nice is I thought I'd only be able to fit you know ten comics um, in each top loader, but you're able to actually snugly fit two in there, so you can protect up to two comics per top loader, kind of like, you know, kind of like when, you know, I used to put two baseball cards in a top loader back in the day just to to kind of be more economic. I didn't have that many, you know, top loaders when I was collecting. I had more cards than top loaders, so I, that's the only way you could do it. But anyway, it's the same kind of concept. You can put two comics per top loader and just kind of have them. Now, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a little bit tougher to get out, but um, it's, I mean, you're not going to be pulling these in and out. Once they're in, they're in. They're actually more secure if you put them in that way. Um, they won't slip out. If you just put one, there's a risk of slipping out. Now, I, so having done that, I've able to, I was able to kind of free up some of my other Mylars, and these, are, these can go to my other books, um, my other lesser books. Um, but yeah, th these will just go down the line and be used for my other books. But it freed up uh, quite a bit of these sleeves, which you can then um, use toward others. So I, I would recommend getting this. Um, the more you can buy, the better, obviously, for your collection. Um, for two seventy a pop, I don't think that's. I mean, this is if you were thinking of just slabbing your comics to protect and present them. This is a really uh, economic option. Um, it's it's uh, you know you can display this just like that, and the great thing is it's really secure. Like your comics are are definitely well protected. Um, the only bad thing about this is, um, again, there's an opening here. So anybody who's collected comics, uh, or sorry, baseball cards or sports cards, and you view these these top loaders, exact same thing. What happens to these top loaders over time is they get scratched, and they get, um, the, you know, dust collects into the bottom. So it's really hard to get that like some of that dust out. So it gets really dingy and dusty over time. So what I've done with my, a few of my, um, for example, this Jim Lee signature, I've actually wrapped it and taped it up in an additional layer of plastic so the dust doesn't get there and it doesn't, it's just not exposed. That top isn't exposed. And also it protects us from scratches. So I just added, that's me. Um, I'm kind of anal like that. But uh, that's what I felt good about. I had these uh, nice plastic wraps lying around for um, my other slabs, for my um, CGC slabs. So I used them to do this. So let's go through the comics. Um, this one, is, uh, if you watched my previous video, is one I picked up for $0.25. Cents. It's Batman 6. Um this is heating up. Apparently, there's uh, indication that the Court of Isles might appear in the next Robert Pattinson Batman movie. Um, they're saying that uh, the rumor is that uh, the, the Court of Owls will be the, the next villain in the next uh, Matt Reeves Batman movie. So this that's moving this. And uh, man, I just... The fact that I ran into this um, and got it for half price, I got it for $1.50. This is the second print rare variant, uh, the red uh, second print variant. Um, so this is double uh, what Batman 6 goes for. So I don't know what um, the current fair market value on this, I'm sure it's going up, but this is probably going to be well over a $100 book now. So uh, pleased to have that. That's a hot book. Um, I have on the other side uh, X Men 142. Again, just very happy with these, with this investment. I also put uh, the Moon Knight that I got for a quarter. <laughs> no joke, I got this Moon Knight at half price books for 25 cents, and man, that's that was along with in the hall with the the Batman, 
and uh, yeah this is a really nice copy um, so I wanted to protect this one as well this one's also heating up in value uh, with a new Moon Knight television series coming out and on the other side we got my newsstand um, Secret Wars number one this is a really nice copy uh, we'll hopefully get this submitted for grading at some point all right, the next book. This is an this isn't in good, in, uh, good grade. It's it's probably like a three point five or lower. It's a really low grade book, but I just love the cover. I want to protect this one. This is this is um, just one of my sentimental favorites. Um, cause I, I I like just I just really like the character. Uh, it's a Bronze Age book. Uh, Shazam is actually a character I think. Um, you know, it's probably going to gain some popularity, um, as I really liked the movie. It, it wasn't, it was just a, a nice, you know, like kid friendly superhero movie. Um, very entertaining. And I could see them doing more with this uh, character, um, as Black Adam comes in. And speaking of Black Adam, we've got him here on the other side. Um, this is a book I bought. I don't... I don't really get into speculation, but when I saw that Black Adam trailer, I just had to have a Black Adam book. And because Superman and Shazam are um, two of my favorite DC characters, I thought, why not have all three? And I and, and so um, I got a high, I, I, I had a low grade copy of this, or I would say like a mid solid mid grade copy of this, but low to mid grade but this one is um very high grade i i, I actually uh paid up for it so happy to have that in my collection now um wolverine what's you know jim lee these are these are just um some of his iconic covers that i want to protect i also have um this signed copy of x-men one signed by jim lee that's his old school signature. Um, and on the other side, we have another Jim Lee uh, X Men 11 book there. Again, just wanted to keep these protected. My Neil Adams Superman. Um, Want to keep that protected. It's in there with a Jim Lee Superman and Batman. Uh, the Silent Issue. Gotta have to protect this. This one I kept in by itself because for some reason it's just. It's um, got like a larger bag, so it, it just snugly fits in there. So I don't mind having that by itself. This one, uh, yeah, I put 88 and 89 together in a, in a top loader. So it looks really nice. You want to always have keep this these together. So uh, yeah, just nice. It's, I, and I know these are protected now. And so peace of mind you get peace of mind now um yeah uh one of the the grails in my collection absolutely well not a grail anymore grail is technically something you can't achieve but i was able to achieve this but i i, I consider it a grail still because it's a book that is absolutely amazing Okay, and then, uh, yeah, my last top loader is my signed copy of G.I. Joe, Larry Hama, signed copy of G.I. Joe, and also my signed copy of Web of Spider-Man by Stan the Man Lee. These are two uh, of my cherished comics, and they're now... So I don't necessarily... Before, I had been wanting to slab these signed... Uh, get these graded and slabbed by CGC. Uh, that was kind of like what I was wanting to do at some point. But now that I have them in these top loaders, um, I don't necessarily feel like I need to go and get them slabbed now. Because these aren't particularly like high grade copies. I mean, they'll probably come back like at an 8.5 or an 8. Um, this one probably an eight, seven, five to eight. So, I mean, in terms of getting them graded, there's no point. 
also CGC doesn't do, you know, signature verification like CBCS does. So if I was to get submitted, it would have just been to have like them in a slab and a grade um, for protection and, and just to have it to present. But now that it is, this presents pretty well uh, without the grade. So yeah, I've lost all interest in wanting to submit this at, you know, to CGC. So yeah, we'll just keep this in the collection as is. Um, these other books, like this one, I, I want to get slabbed uh, with the grade because I just I just want to know the grade. Um, this is another one where I think just having the grade on there and, and, and in a slab is, is better than um, having them. So if I could get the signature somehow verified by CGC and get that blue label, that'd be fine. Or a yellow label, I guess. But... It would come back in a green label. I don't know if I want to do that. But these these comics, of course, to have them in a blue label would would just add the appeal um, and protect them. And yeah, it would just having I think CGC slabs in your collection is um, you know something that you want. Yeah, I mean you're getting that sort of validation on what that final grade is and. And you're also, you know, keeping it preserved. So I, I do want to uh, take advantage of that. But yeah, um, if you really don't care about grading and just want to protect your books um, and without having to pay $40 to put them in a, you know, nice slab, a protected slab, I would definitely recommend this. This is... Uh, this is definitely worth uh, $27. In fact, when I get some more uh, higher price books, um, I feel like what I have now is fine in these uh, Mylar sleeves uh, to protect. I don't have uh, too many books in, in, uh, of uh, that are worth, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So pretty much everything um, that's of value and, and, and sentimental value to me have been putting these top loaders. So the the at the the moment I feel like oh I need to pick up some more um because my collection's grown um is when we'll do that. We'll pick up more when I feel like it warrants my collection warrants more protection. For now, I'm I'm just very satisfied with getting these 10 slabs. It's a, it's a, essentially almost 20 comics. Um I've got two per uh, top loader minus one so it's technically 19 comics that I have in um, this kind of protected form so very pleased with that yeah um, if you're considering getting these top loaders or maybe you have them in your collection already um, let me know what you think um, again uh, thanks to J rule for recommending these I got them I'm really happy and I would recommend them to you as well uh, if you've if you're just having your valuable comics and bags and boards or these uh, flimsy mylars for protection, you really need to upgrade, especially for the high value books. This is, uh, you know, two dollars and seventy cents to keep um, something, you know, pretty much airtight and uh, non bendable and kind of flat and pressed and keeping moisture and and, and the elements out. Um, I guess if these were kind of UV tinted as well, that would, that would be the ultimate, but, um, I don't think these are UV tinted. Maybe they are. Let me check here. No, nothing, uh, no UV protection whatsoever, but if it had UV protection, it'd be that much better, but yeah, uh, very pleased. All right. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.